This is the Krillcast. I am Chris. I'm Will. I'm John, Game 31. And if you happen to be a Google Stadia fan or, you know, wanting to get a next gen console, yeah. this is the video for you to watch because oh, we're going to talk about tune those out things. Now. <laughs> yeah, tune out now. <laughs> so uh, today is what, Will? It is a Manic Monday. And who's our guest below here? We got Gamester81. Why don't you tell everybody about your channel? Uh, uh, yeah. I, was I supposed to say that? I was you were. I, you just left me hanging, so I just rolled with <laughs> he, it. He gave you a, a softball. You're supposed to you know, hit it. You, missed, you swung and missed. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so, no, my name's John, Gamester81. I've got a channel on, on YouTube, of course, Gamester81. Um, and I cover just rare console reviews and retro gaming and everything gaming. We have a lot of fun on it. So, appreciate you guys checking it out. Absolutely. And if you guys have not already done so, make sure you subscribe to youtube.com slash gamester81 and you'll get all the greatest content of retro gaming you could find on, on the interwebs. Also, check out his game that they've produced under Collector Vision. Sydney and the... controller the... is blasphemy, by the way. <laughs> Watch one seven sixty four one. Yeah, yeah, you're not a fan of it? Blasphemy. <laughs> so Sydney no, Hunter so and... Much more comfortable, but I love the N64. It is a lot more comfortable. I, mean, yeah, I was throwing up on... Throwing up another softball there, Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Curse of the Mayan. There we go. Curse of the Mayan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All the good stuff. No, you're good, man. You're good. <laughs> Definitely go check out the game produced by Collector Vision Games. Um, worth your time. And we will be uh, hopefully live streaming it at some point in the near future to show you guys what it's all about. That'll be cool. Yeah, that'll be cool. So the first topic, first quick topic is that Krata, which I had never even heard of before I found out it was leaving the Google Stadia exclusivity, um, is apparently leaving the Google Stadia exclusivity to come to PC later this year. So what is Krata? This is apparently the launch trailer of it. It's got kind of like a Fortnite -y feel looking yeah, thing it looks to like it. Fortnite, yeah. Oh yeah, it looks yeah. But it also has got like oh, that it's uh always Fortnite. The dance movie? Yeah. If you saw it's got like mini games though, it's got that uh what's that kitchen game? Fortnite. I saw it. It's dark. Dark thing. No, what's that kitchen game oh, though? Gosh. You're all trying to run around the kitchen and collect oh, food. Cookie Mama? No, that's not it either. It's, uh, it's overcooked. It's a bunch of mini, overcooked. Overcooked. It's a mini games and stuff, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is supposed to be Roblox, but like a Fortnite oh, version yeah. of Roblox. It's like Minecraft and it meets, yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, it's basically just like Project Spark, but mixed with Fortnite and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Well, I guess this is coming to PC. So if you were ever like jealous of the people on Stadia, now you know you're going to be getting your own version of this on Steam in the near future. So. Yeah, cool. I think the fact that you didn't even know about this game when we cover gaming every week, I think that tells you all you need to know. <laughs> this enough. is like a game my kids would love. Them. They have seven year old twins, and this is their style of game where, like, you go out and do these mini games. And, you know, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's geared towards the younger audience, so I'm not surprised neither of us heard of it. So, whoops, that's not it. That's <laughs> 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 I learned my lesson about typing in scalping image search. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> oh, man. So apparently, um, <laughs> I don't know how I recover from that one. Okay. Whew. So PS5 stock was bought by scalpers before the units even listed for sale. How are we ever going to get next-gen consoles online? Well, the answer is you're probably not. So you might as well go to brick and mortar at this point and get your consoles that way. Well, you know, every time I go to Walmart, they're like, oh, you got to go online to get it, you know. And even GameStop's yeah. told me that, too. They're like, oh, go online and get it. So I was like, can't get online, can't get it in person. I think it'll be probably until May until we get more stock, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I saw one yeah. in the wild at Meyer, and I had a fleeting moment where I was like, I'm here to get groceries, but... <laughs> and I was like, right. nah, I'm good. And then they, they just haven't had them in stock ever since. Uh Yeah. I think they should only sell them in brick and mortar stores. That would, that would help with the scalpers. But or they could just wait until they actually have enough numbers and like wait a couple months to sell this, and then yeah. sell a whole bunch at once. So you I, like you, people can actually get it. I've even been on like the Sony site where they're like, "Oh, come at this hour at four o'clock," and you know, it always crashes on me every time. And you you put in your. I've even had it in my. My my I check out box, you know, like I put in my my empty box, whatever. I check out and like it crashes. Not able to to process this. Oops, ah. But I refuse to pay a thousand dollars or more for a PS5. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, nobody should do that. In fact, if anybody is willing to do that, as somebody stated in a previous episode, he's like, "You are the problem." 
Because if you'll right. pay $1,000, and then scalpers will keep buying them and reselling them for yep. you. Oh, and, and you see these pictures of people on eBay, they have like 10 of them, right? It's so frustrating. The thumbnail, yeah, it's no. like 10 of them stacked together. I like, hate that they have the picture of more in the background. Ugh. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hate that. I hate that. Like you it's said, like, though, to your point, Chris, like you're, if you're buying it, you're the ones feeding the problem, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's all supply and demand. So. Yep. If you're willing to buy a scalped console for twice the price, then they'll keep buying it and selling it to you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we kind of talked about this, and and this is out of order for when we recorded it, but we we kind of brought this up on our Friday episode that you guys will see four days from now. But the Analog Pocket, um, something that sold out immediately, and probably some scalping going on there too, I have no idea. Um, There was limited stock, and it's going to be apparently released in May of this year. Um, The hype for this console is very high because it can play the following games, and it's going to require some adapters for some of these, but right out of the box, it'll play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and then I think adapters would be required for the Game Gear, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, TurboGrafx-16, and the Atari Lynx, and apparently SD cards, um, whatever they can put on there for that. So, um, and I, I realized after I put this out there that I had left the KF console link there, so you can't actually click that to go to the <laughs> analog pocket on our outline here, but that's fine. I'm sure you guys knew how to find this thing. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> what do you guys think about the analog pocket? How do you guys feel about the idea of a re-released kind of high-end Game Boy. I, I love these FPG. I mean, I love these these consoles that the analog does. The quality is amazing. I've got the the Super Nintendo one, the NES, and the uh, the Genesis one they have, and they're they're incredible because they're, they're they play out the actual games and uh, they're just you know you can do things that you can kind of do with emulation with the uh, the graphics and stuff. It's really cool. I think they're really well made. Yeah, I absolutely love this little guy because it looks just like the Game Boy Color, and that's my favorite mm-hmm. handheld. So, I don't know. I'm definitely getting this. <laughs> I'm a little sad about the price, but it's going to be worth it. Yeah, here's the adapters. More, That's what I was telling you guys about. More before. available because, like you said, they, they sold out quickly, and it's probably mm-hmm. like we're going to have scalpers probably selling this thing for twice as much, too. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I think day much one, the... people were selling these for twice as much. <laughs> All right. I think the prospect, though, of being able to play Game Boy. Uh, advanced Game Boy Color games on something other than the Game Boy Player for the GameCube is highly desirable for a lot of the gaming community who owns Game Boys and Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance games because there aren't a lot of options for the general community to play those games right. on a TV, especially not you know uh, in a legal manner. Let's put it that way. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but this apparently, when you dock it, you can use a Bluetooth controller with the dock and the console together and play it on the TV, and that's yeah, always that's kind really of cool fascinated me because i love the Mm -hmm. idea of being able to just pop in an hdmi cord to a modern tv and play these games it's like the switch yeah yep (laughs) for old games (laughs) for old games yeah that is kind of funny that they've taken the time to put all these console games on the switch but none of the portable market like they don't have pokemon yellow on there they don't have you know pokemon red and leaf red or leaf green and fire red or any of those game boy advance games on the switch Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny when you think about it, because they could easily do that. Yeah, well, I was trying to buy uh, the Minish Cap the other day, and I realized you can't buy any of those games. It's very frustrating. <laughs> so who is this console for, then? Is it more for Me. the general public, or is it more for, like, hard, more no, more of the hardcore high gaming end. market? It's No, Analog is definitely the high end. I mean, they, their very first console, if you guys remembered, was a wooden uh, Neo Geo. that They released it was, like, card of wood and super expensive. They don't even sell it anymore. So these are obviously high end. This is like the Porsche or you know the Mercedes Benz <laughs> of, of 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 console gaming, in my opinion. You know, if you want the the Hondas, you know, you maybe get a Hyperkin, <laughs> right? You know, and then you want a Mercedes, you you get an analog. It's my that's kind of <laughs> good analogy. I I say you know, and everybody that's I, I've seen have one of these online. They're always just talking about how high the quality is of what they produce yeah. with the FPGA boards. It's like near perfect um, uh, clone of the original hardware something interesting on a side note fpj speaking of which uh collector vision games we released i don't know if you guys are aware uh, a new coleco vision clone that's fpga they can play oh, really? also atari 2600 games yeah it's called the coleco vision phoenix um and it's uh it's smaller much smaller than the actual console but just going through the work of, of getting the boards and we've we've sold our first batch already and uh, those have been made and shipped now we're working on our second batch and this will probably be our only batch left that we do. So they're super limited. But uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ClecoVision console or not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. all HD. And they got it comes with SD card slot. So I think FPGA is cool for retro gaming. It's it's not really emulating because you're using the cart, but it just definitely enhances the graphics and all that good stuff too. It's great. Probably a lot of what people don't understand about um, FPGAs is that the the way it emulate it, it doesn't emulate. It's it's literally hardware piece by piece um, recreation of the original board, right? It's a field right. programmable gate array, so you could program it to be whatever board you want it to be, but it is near perfect clone emulate clone mm-hmm. clone of the hardware you're you're trying to play. So right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on FPGAs, but it is really cool technology. I had a friend of mine that used yes. to work for a company that designed FPGAs. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, let me see here. So, what other portable machines exist like this? You know, knockoff Game Boys or or other types of there there aren't I, I can think of as far as like Game Boy clones. Um, there aren't many, unless you consider the handheld emulation machines something. You know, mm. those are out there. The only one I can remember that I'd like to just highlight here, because it was quite hilarious to me when it came out originally, or when it was originally um, announced, was the uh, Hyperkin Smart Boy. Do you guys remember this thing? Did it ever, did it ever come out? It did no. come out in very it's limited fun. quantities, and it was only for Android. That's why I didn't get it, because I don't know. Oh, Android. yeah. And what this actually did okay. was it would it would um, download the cart to a memory file on the, con- on, the um, on the actual phone. And then essentially it would use the touchscreen of the phone using the capacitive uh, touch with the buttons on the game, the actual uh, hardware. The couple of people I saw online that reviewed this thing were like, yeah, it's not really worth it. <laughs> it's but an interesting concept, cool. but yeah, I could see how it'd be kind mm-hmm. of hard to, because what if your phone is bigger than, you know, mm-hmm. it seems like it's a one size fit one kind of size. I think it's not one size fits all. I think it expands, yeah. but I'm not hundred percent positive. I think it does because you see here it's like a little smaller, and you see here it looks a little wider. I think the back plate will actually separate a little bit, so it'll fit bigger and smaller. But um, yeah. foam. This, emu- this is emulation, though. One hundred percent emulation. Yeah. 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 I just thought it was an interesting concept. That's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It would be cool to see an Android device that. Uh, could run Game Boy games, but that would also be emulation, like where it would literally physically run the Game Boy games. I think what it's... about the, the little handheld that has the crank? Is it only playing original games, or is that also emulation? You don't remember what we talked about this, do you, Will? I do. I remember talking about it. I don't remember the, the, the uh, conversation. Um, panic. <laughs> the uh, wasn't it by Panic? Was the name? I can't remember. Game Panic or something like that. Panic handheld. You know what I'm talking This thing. Yeah, there it is. Playdate. Oh. Play date. There yeah, that does not run anything but Playdate games. Well, FYI. Okay. All right. It's interesting looking. Yeah. Huh. That's cool. Like, I have no idea how that little crank thing is going to work, but it's meant to be like a, a forward progress type thing. So you can go forward progress by spinning it one way, backwards progress spinning it the other way, and it's basically only utilized in their um, main featured platforming game that they have. But they're planning to use it more in the future. Uh, okay. I don't know when this thing's actually coming out, but I think it was either a hundred or hundred fifty dollars. It, it was. A little bit expensive, but it's not meant for every single gamer out there. It's meant for That's a specific niche. crowd. Yeah, right. So crazy. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to say about the analog pocket? Anybody in this group conversation going to be getting one? Me. I hope so, but I'm not paying twice as much for. It. I'm not going to pay for it. Yeah. Really for it. So. Okay. Um, we'll see. Hopefully it has, comes available. Hopefully they're. I think they're smart enough to maybe have. Maybe that's why they're waiting five months to release it. Is maybe they're getting more stock. Hopefully mm-hmm. in in stock. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. And if you're interested in the ColecoVision, check out the Collector Vision Phoenix video game system. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Game Straight One for being on this channel with us. It's been a blast talking to you. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. As always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm John. And we will see you on next Krillcast. Bye, guys.